Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Heat number three of my fountain pen tournament. The two pens today. We've got a cross Bailey light. Quite a nice grey colour, if maybe a little bit boring looking, but we'll look about that won't we, as we go through. And that's going to go up against the Twisby Eco. I've picked the green version for this video, and this has got the 1.1 stub nib in it. Piston filling pen, I love demonstrator pens. So two very different looking pens, but how do they write? How do they perform? How do they feel in the hand? We'll find out as we go through today's video. Today's pens, we've got the Cross Bailey Light, 38 Aussie dollars. That's going up against the Twisby Eco, 59 Aussie dollars. Two very different pens, but price-wise, you know, they're fairly similar. Let's start by taking a look through the bodies. We'll start with the Cross Bailey Light. So this is a grey pen. There are other colours available. Very nondescript in my opinion. The top of the cap, we've got a silver coloured disc. That then comes down into a tapering plastic band. Down to the clip band, again the, that's silvered. We've got there the clip, there's the word cross. The clip, yeah nice and springy on this one. The cap tapers up until it gets towards the bottom there of the clip. Then it straightens out. We've got this wide clip band going around. A little bit of engraving on there, no words that I can see. A little bit more plastic, and that plastic is tapering down now to the body. Body seems to be the same width all the way down. And then we've got another silver coloured ring. And then we taper down with this cap. The cap is fixed in place though, just there for decoration. The cap, that comes off in half. One, no it doesn't. The cap, it pulls off. I keep wanting to twist this, but it's a pull off cap. So Nice stiff feeling. I've got to be honest, I haven't used this pen overly much, so that could be why it's still stiff. Maybe it slackens with time, I don't know. I haven't had the time with it. The section, it's the same gray material. So that's going all the way down to the bottom. There's a little bit of a metal ring with a little bit of a lip. And then we take a look at the nib. The nib on this, actually quite decorative, isn't it? So, plain at the top, below the breather hole, we start to get some patterning. So we've got there a picture, which looks like, a bit to me, looks like a little bit like a skull and crossbones. Then below that, on the left-hand side, we've got 1846. On the right, USA. And then the words cross come below that. One thing I do like with this, I'm just going to turn it around slightly. The tip, it's bent down. Now, I don't know if that's by design or if that was just something that happened to this nib, but this is how it came to me with this bent nib. I actually quite like the way it tapers down and bends down a little bit. It's quite nice. This is a cartridge converter pen. So there we've got the converter. It came with the converter. Let's pop this back together. And we'll take a look at the Twisby Eco. Twisby Eco, this one, loads of colors, isn't there? I've gone for the green one. I like green, it's one of my favourite colours. The top of the cap, we've got the red insert there with the Twisby logo on. I like the, I can never remember what it's called, I think it's the hexagonal shape of this cap. Going all the way down, you know, you can capture the light, hopefully you'll see as I turn this around. So we come there, the cap, it's the same width all the way down till it gets to the bottom. Near the top, coming out from that material we've got the clip there's a clip there very stiff i don't often use my clips so that doesn't bother me too much near the bottom of the cap we do taper out slightly then we've got this wide metal ring we've got there the word twisby and then on the back eco and taiwan there is a noticeable drop down then to the body really can feel it We've got the transparent body. I love the demonstrator nature of these. I love the transparentness. I love to be able to see my ink sloshing around. Can't really see much at the moment because it is quite full. This is a piston filling pen. As you can see, the piston mechanism takes up about a third of the entire body. So you do lose that ink capacity. 
the barrel same width all the way down we get near the end there's a rubber o-ring there going all the way around then we've got this green for the filling mechanism not going to work it but if i was to fill it i would twist it that would push down the piston put in the ink twist it the other way and that sucks the ink up into the barrel the cap comes off in half one about one and a half turns so quite quick to take the cap off that reveals this transparent section i love this i love being able to see the ink the way that it's going down here through the actual section i think it looks so nice and then it reveals a nib this is a standard twisby nib made for them by yoho so it's very similar to the cross one in a way so we've got the breather hole below that we've got the logo below that we've got twisby this particular nib is a 1.1 stub nib they come with a massive range of different nibs very nice range and very easy to swap this isn't this isn't the actual nib i bought with this one it's from one of my other twisbies i just pull the nib and feed out and swap it over dead simple to do you can swap it over between two pens in what maybe five seconds so easy so quick to do even better though it makes it easy for cleaning because you can pull that nib and feed out and then carefully with a syringe you can actually get a syringe down and flush the body out makes it dead simple to clean this pen Let's swap over and we'll look at some size comparisons. We'll start with my standard size comparisons, the Pilot Metropolitan and the Lamy Safari. I've got to be honest, all four pens, very similar in terms of length. Yes, the Cross, just a teeny tiny little bit shorter. Width wise, the Cross, very similar to what we see with the Metropolitan and the Eco and the Safari, again, both seem to be equal in width. Let's take the caps off. With the caps off, the Eco now the longest of the four pens, ever so slightly longer than the Safari, and then the Metropolitan and the Cross, roughly the same length. So they're two very similar shaped and sized pens. Let's swap it over and we'll look at some pens in roughly the same price range. The two pens I brought in, we've got the Wingsung 699. This is the piston version. This is 38 Aussie dollars. The Cross Bailey Light, 38 Aussie dollars. So same price. The Twisby Eco, 59 Aussie dollars. And the Marjon A1, 59 Aussie dollars. So again, the same price. Very different looking pens, all of them though. We've got the 699, which is a heavily inspired by the Pilot Custom 823. We've got the Cross, we've got the Eco, then we've got that Marjon A1 inspired by a lot of the clicky pens. I'm showing the A1 with the nib out because we've got the nibs out on the rest. Let's pop the caps on these. With the caps on, the Winsung 699, an awful lot longer than all the other pens. The rest, again, very similar in size. You know, when we look at this little collection here, that Cross Bailey Light just looks very boring, doesn't it? To me, it just does not look inspiring. How do they write or how do they fit in the hand? The cross belly light is a nice fit unposted. Bit thin, th feels quite thin down here, bit light. It will post, posts quite well and doesn't feel too bad. So I find this one, it's all right to actually use this posted. With the Eco, unposted, nice length. Again, to me, I'm being extremely picky. The section just feels a little bit on the thin side. I would like that to be a bit wider. Can you post it? Sort of. It will post, but it posts just onto here where this rubber ring is. And I always worry that I'm going to accidentally be taking this off twisting and catch this mechanism end up ejecting ink. So I don't use this posted. But you could if you want. It does feel quite long and unwieldy posted. But unposted, I find this is a pleasure to use. Let's swap on over and we'll fetch in the rule of measuring. Here's the rule of measuring. We'll start with the cross. So, the whole pen comes in at 13.6 centimetres. Unposted, we're looking at 12.5 centimetres. Posted, about 15.3 centimetres. The width of the body at its widest, which I measured, has been here. That was 1.1 centimetres. The width of the cap, that's 1.3 centimetres. 
And then the section goes from the narrowest, which is 0.9, up to 1.1 centimeters. As I say, I feel that personally this is a little bit light, it's a little bit thin. The Twisby Eco. Full pen, 13.8 centimeters, so two millimeters longer. Uncapped, just over 13 centimeters, so that's about five millimeters longer. Posted, I'm gonna do a posting, I say, I don't really post this. That comes in about 16.9 centimeters. The width of the body, that comes in at 1.21 centimeters. The cap, 1.39 centimeters. Then the section goes from 0.82 up to 0.94. So again, actually slightly thinner than the cross barely, but it doesn't feel it because I think of the extra length and the way that a pen feels in the hand. Let's swap on over and fetch in the scales of weighing. Here we've got the scales of weighing. So we'll start with the cross again. The full pen, 22 grams. Body only, remember there is ink in this. 15 grams and the cap seven grams with the eco full pen 23 grams body only 14 grams cap only nine grams so to be honest they are both roughly the same weight remember we've got ink in this one there's a lot more ink in here which adds weight to the pen let's swap on over and we'll do our writing sample just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out. And as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos. And then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members all down to us so please if you can consider joining the channel a link will be in the description down below here we've got the notepad of testing this is a black and red notebook a5 oxford optic paper paper that i love to use for my writing tests we're going to start with the cross so we've got here a cross barely light this is a steel nib and it's a medium nib to me it seems quite a thin medium nib the cost for this pen 38 aussie dollars the ink is by lamy or lamy crystal so it's part of the crystal series and it's been eto eight now, the beauty with this grey pen, you can use virtually any coloured ink with it. I've got this, like, I'm going to cut, it's like a grey blue ink in here. I think it actually looks quite nice. Last of a sample, though, that I've got of this ink. Drying times, so we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Still smudging there a little bit. One minute. After a minute there, that's nice and dry. Now, just for completeness, the temperature here at the moment is 29 degrees Celsius, but it is fairly humid. It all does to affect the drying times, doesn't it? Is there any line variation? So, now this is one of the things I do keep doing. I accidentally keep loosening the barrel, so I'll just close that barrel again. So line variation, so there's no pressure. Here's with some pressure. Slightly wider, but you know, I'm putting pressure on it, so you expect that. No pressure with, none with, none with. So not really much in the way of line variation. And I'll move the mic and write a sentence.
quite enjoyable. I don't know if you hear it, there's a little bit of audible feedback. It's not glassy smooth, there's definitely a nice tactileness to it. It's very enjoyable nib to write with. So to me, the rest of the pen just is uninspiring. Final test. Then going backwards. Nib keeps up really well. So that's the cross Bailey light. I'm going to move the page up ever so slightly and we'll do the Twisby Eco. So this one's got a 1.1 stub nib on, so just be aware of that. It's got a stub nib on, putting down more ink already than what we see with that cross Bailey light. So we've got here a Twisby Eco with the 1.1 stub nib. The price, 59 Aussie dollars. The ink is by Diamine, and it's Black Ivy. This is a sheening ink. We'll take a look at that in a second. Drying times, so we go immediate, 10 seconds. Thirty seconds. One minute. Nearly dry there at a minute. Not going to do a two minute test. We'll move the. No. Let's look at our line variation. So here's no pressure. Now I'm going to add some pressure. We do see a wider line. It's putting down more ink because there's more pressure on it. This nib feels very soft there's a real lovely bounce to it now again no pressure this time we're going to go across with no pressure stub nature of the nib so we get a wider line down than we do across so no pressure with none with none and with i do think this gives some very nice natural line variation we'll move the mic to write the sentence This is another nib, very nice to write with. I say it's got that bounce to it, a little bit of audibleness, hopefully that came over on the mic. Unfortunately, there might be a bit of a wind noise behind the mic when I'm doing that. Um, it's warm, as I said, it's, we're talking 29 Celsius. I've got my desk fan on, it's the only way I can actually record this without sweating all over the paper. Love writing with this pen. I love writing with all my ecos. I've got uh, another two, I've got one with a fine nib, one with an extra fine nib, all very nice to write with. Final test, and then backwards. Again, the flow keeps up really well. And I love the fact that I can see my ink level very easily. So that's the Twisby Eco. Now, before I give you my scars, I just want to lift this up a bit. Hopefully we can see there. So the ink itself, the base color is like a very dark, uh, nearly black green, but then if we get the light right, I've seen it really well my, with my eyes. Hopefully you can catch that now. We've got this gorgeous red sheen to it. Looks very nice. We'll start with the cross Bailey light. I've said it once and twice. In terms of pen looks, it's not very inspiring. It's just like a grey colour. It just sits there, you know, it's a pen. There's nothing exciting about it. There's nothing that grabs me about it. It's, you know, it's what it is. It's a plastic tube which holds a nib. The build quality, no problem so far. I said the problem with this pen, I don't use it as often as, as I should. So I haven't really been able to exercise it. That's why I said with this capping, you know, does that start to loosen over time? I don't know. But so far with the build quality, very nice. In terms of writing experience, really enjoy it. It's very nice to write with. It's a bit of a fine line. I don't think it's a medium. It's more of a fine nib to me. I actually do like the fact that the nib looks slightly bent. I say not sure. I think that's by design because I know when I've used this in the past and mentioned it, people have said that they get the same. 
I actually quite like that. I think it's just a little bit of unusual on this. It's one of those little details, which is actually quite nice. Now, flow wise, I've had no issues so far today with this, but in my test writing, occasionally I've had an issue where the ink would stop flowing. All I've had to do is give it a couple of shakes like this and it would start writing again. So it's not a big issue. It's not something I need to go and prime the feed. I need to do longer term testing with that, but at the moment I'm quite happy to say the flow is good. Comfort wise, I do find the pen a bit on the short side, although it's not that much shorter than the Eco. It feels thin, even though it's actually slightly wider than the Eco in terms of the section. That's a bit weird, I find, but just shows you how the rest of the pen can affect your impression of it. That's the Crossbody Light, the Twisby Eco. Pen looks, love the looks of these. I think they're so nice. Doesn't really matter what color you get. It looks unusual. It draws the eye. I think a lot of that is due to the demonstrator nature and then having the pop of color. Looks really nice, looks good. And it's a pen that I really enjoy using when I'm out in public. Build quality, absolutely no issues. I've saved up three of them. I've normally got a Twisby Eco inked up virtually all the time. No problems. Had occasional flow issues, but that tends to be with uh, shimmer inks where the shimmer would block the feed. So what I tend to do, if I know I'm going to be using a shimmer ink, I just accept I'm going to get some flow issues. Doesn't bother me because again, usually a couple of little shakes, that's all it needs and it starts writing again. The length of the pen, although it's shorter in measurement, feels nice. I love this in the hand. I think this is just about the right size. The section, although, yes, it does feel small, and I know it's smaller measurement-wise, but it doesn't feel it. I think that's because the way the rest of the pen is slightly wider. But in the hand, it sits so nice, very comfortable to use. Comfort-wise, though, yeah, love it. So that's the Twisby Eco. So we've got here writing on the Oxford Optic paper. This is 52 GSM Tomo Ripper paper the old Tomai River paper. So here we've got the Crossbury light. You can see here where I was saying about the flow issue. So it was starting to run out of ink there. Couple of shakes and then everything was fine for the rest of it. I quite like this ink. Again, it's not overly inspiring, but you know, it looks nice, it does what I want. With the Twisby Eco, here we are. Here's that black ivy again. Loads of that red popping off the page there. Nice line, nice line variation. Value for money for both these pens? I think at $38. This is at the high end of its value range. It's a good pen. I would buy another one. I know they do some in different colors. I think if I was to buy another one, I would get a different color. But I'd also want a broader nib. I say this nib to me just seems too fine. The Eco. Value for money, $59. It's actually gone up from when I bought it. When I bought it, they were about $44. So they've gone up over the past couple of years. I've had this, I think I've had this particular one now nearly three years. I've got three of them. Will I buy another one? It depends. I like the pen. I like the nibs that I've got in them. I think I'd buy another one if they came out with a color that I really, really liked. They haven't so far. I know they keep coming out with new colors very often, so they are worth looking at. But I'm quite happy with the three I have. If I was to get another one, I think I would either see if there's a broader stub or I might go just for a broad nib. So these are my thoughts on the Crossbaby Light with Lamy Crystal Beneath White and the Twisby Eco with Diamine Black Ivy. So over to you now to pick the winner. Head on over to my YouTube community page. There you'll find a poll. Vote which one do you think should be the winning pen. Remember, it's only votes on that poll that count towards picking the winning pen, which will be the pen that will then go forward into the semi-finals. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on these pens? Which one do you think should be the winner? This is where it's up to you. Head on over to my community page on YouTube. There you'll find a poll to vote for the winning pen. Only votes on that poll are the ones that count towards the winning pen. So head on over now. Next Sunday on my YouTube Live, what we'll do is we'll take a look at the poll 
and the winning pen that will go forward into the semi-finals. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.